This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in this episode's description. Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. Tesla is upping the amperage at their version 4 posts, allowing the Tesla Cybertruck to charge at 325 kilowatts peak. Yes, you're hearing me correctly, directly from Tesla's charging page on X. All V4 posts in North America can now charge up to 325 kilowatts for the Cybertruck. Now, why is that? This is mainly due to an amperage increase for the version 4 posts. The version 4 posts and the version 3 posts, the version 3 post dispensers are the same that you're used to seeing at a regular Tesla supercharging station. When you hear the word Tesla supercharger, you're likely thinking of a V3 post. Now, the new V4 posts, those taller white stalls with both CCS1 and J3400, have better cooling and so because of this they're able to up the amperage of this station and increase the amount of power that's going into the Cybertruck now because these v4 posts are still 500 volt limited they're using the version 3 cabinets right so although it is a different looking dispenser it is still using the same cabinets and hardware as the version 3. The low voltage is a little different, but the high voltage DC charging is the same. The cabinet is the same. Because of this, there is a 500 volt limit for version 3 uh, dispensers as well as the current version 4 dispensers or posts. I use that word interchangeably, but dispenser, post, same thing. Now, because the Cybertruck, right, is a 810 volt vehicle, which is able to split its pack to two 400 volt packs, to be able to get 325 kilowatts out of that 500 volts, it has to increase the amperage from 700 amps to 900 amps, which gives it that extra boost to get it to 325 kilowatts. I am not Kyle. Hopefully, that makes sense right hopefully that was explained well but due to the amperage increase on the version 4 posts the Cybertruck is able to get 325 kilowatts the reason that the version 4 post is getting right 325 kilowatts and the version 3 post isn't although they share the exact same hardware is because the version 4 post has better cooling better cooling management and so it can handle the increase of uh, the amperage right you increase more amps equals more heat and so for the version 3 dispenser it likely in post it likely couldn't handle that extra heat that's going to ruin the longevity of the dispenser in post so it just makes more sense to wait for version 4 which while currently the version 4 posts are using version 3 cabinets and hardware because they have better cooling management from the cables uh and from the the system itself they're able to up the amperage to 900, still able to handle that heat, and that's what gets you the 325 kilowatts. Hopefully that <laughs> explains everything. Now, Tesla has already been doing this since August. They've been doing this at select supercharger, V4 supercharging stations. They've been increasing the amperage to 900, which gives Cybertrucks that 325 kilowatts. Only at select superchargers. However, just recently, right, as Tesla made that tweet, now, everywhere at all V4 posts in North America, all of them can charge up to 325 kilowatts for the Cybertruck, uh, which is awesome. Now, if we go to this tweet from Tesla's head of supercharging, Max, he says, uh, responding to the post about uh, all V4 posts charging up to 325 kilowatts for the Cybertruck, he says, being able to push software updates to superchargers without requiring on-site visits is incredibly efficient and powerful. And I love this point here. Tesla didn't have to go to each station and have to right, uh, do some sort of manual amperage change or anything. This is all over the air. They can send over the air updates to the, to the superchargers and say, hey, increase to 900 amps, give the Cybertruck more juice, and they just do it all at once. And so now we're seeing all V4 posts 
able to do that. Something he also said, which I thought was really, really cool, um, is that just in the beginning of 2023, sorry, the end of 2023, quarter four of 2023, only 2% of the Tesla supercharging network was V4 posts. Now, uh, as of today, about 14% of supercharger stalls are V4. So clearly the V4 network is growing faster and faster primarily in Europe is growing fast here in North America as well. But initially, right, we saw the growth of the V4 in Europe that's slowly coming here to the United States. And we're seeing Tesla install more V4 posts. Now, those are V4 posts with version three cabinets. And so while the cabinets themselves allow for CCS one and J3400 charging with a payment screen and better cooling, the hardware itself is still limited to the same limits that the version three had, but because the better cooling, it can increase the amperage. Point is Tesla back in November of this past year, 2024, they released their version four cabinet, which I don't think we've yet to see in the real world yet, but this version four cabinet will allow the Tesla version four post to have 1000 amps and up to 1000 volts, which will give it five up to 500 kilowatts for all EVs. No Tesla is currently capable of 500 volts, sorry, 500 kilowatts. I don't think any North American EV is capable of 500 kilowatts, um, but now we're seeing with other vehicles, right? lucid gravity which will be capable of 400 kilowatts we're seeing charge point uh alpatronic with all of the various stations that they're using mercedes bp pulse that have chargers that are capable up to 400 kilowatts and i think as we see more high voltage evs high voltage meaning evs that have more than like a, a 600 nominal voltage so your EGMP cars, your Porsche Taycans, your uh, Lucid Gravity vehicles, your Lucids, vehicles with a higher voltage will be able to charge on the Tesla supercharging network with V4 cabinets and V4 posts at higher charging speeds. So up to 500 kilowatts, most of them are likely gonna get anywhere from 250 to 350. But right, this allows these CCS and non-Tesla EVs to get a higher peak charge at the Tesla supercharging network, which is great. It's exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see a bigger rollout of the V4 post and the V4 dispenser. This creates better infrastructure for all, uh, <clears throat> all EVs because the biggest issue with the current Tesla supercharging network when it comes to being public is that the cables are too short. And currently the Tesla uh, hardware is all legacy. It's all like, older you know uh, there's a 500 volt limit um and uh, although hardware wise it has a thousand uh, amp limit it has a 700 amp limit that they put on the supercharger because of uh, restrictions to the amount of heat it produces right the v3 isn't really not built for a thousand amps and so you have the v3 tesla superchargers maxing at 250 kilowatts only for vehicles that are 500 volts and less. And so your 800 volt vehicles, your high voltage vehicles can't charge on the Tesla supercharging network. They can, but they're getting low speeds, 50 kilowatts at best for some vehicles, for vehicles like um, the EGMP cars, the Ionic 5, the EV6, which have 600, I believe 10 volts nominally for their battery packs you're seeing charge rates at about like 100. And for the new like NAX 2025 Ionic 5, you're getting like 123. So still not amazing speeds. We can get a whole nother conversation about how it's about the curve and not the speed. But the point is, faster speeds allow other EVs to enter Tesla and use, utilize Tesla supercharging network. And that just makes Tesla supercharging network uh, better. It makes it more future proof and allows more EVs to utilize this existing infrastructure soon. Hell, we might get 1500 volt, right? EVs right now we're seeing the, the EV with the highest voltage is the lucid gravity with 926 volts. That's the highest right now, almost a thousand volts soon over time. You never know what might happen, right? We might see EVs, uh, more EVs with a thousand volts 
800 volt, right, being super common among, among mainstream EVs in the future. And so with this existing hardware, with the version 4 dispenser and post, it will allow other newer EVs in the future to utilize the charging network properly without being limited. Hopefully that all made sense. <laughs> That pretty much explains this entire fiasco that uh, Tesla has with introducing V4 posts to a higher amperage, allowing the Cybertruck to charge at 325 kilowatts. Look, that's, that sums up all of it. If that made sense to you, give this video a like. Let me know in the comments if that made sense. Um, again, I'm not Kyle. This is like the first time on the podcast. I think I've explained it in that depth right where everyone can understand uh and yeah look thank you guys so much for watching it'll be interesting to see how the cybertruck continues to uh perform charging wise i mean since last year early 2024 the f i mean january out of spec we performed our charging test on the cybertruck and i'll pull this up here you can see the tesla cybertruck let this load We'll go to trucks and I'll have this linked down in the description as well. Right now for those listening and not watching, I'm pulling up the out of spec website, which has the uh, charge curve graphs. And so you can see all the charge curves for all the vehicle testing that we do. We can see the Hummer EV and the Chevy Silverado with uh, really high charge here, 360, um, 363 kilowatts peak and then holding this for quite some time and kind of tapering off. And we can see it's kind of similar with the Silverado, but we'll go over here and we'll just click the Cybertruck Cyberbeast. And you can see here, right, peaks 250, and then slowly tapers off uh, fairly quickly. I mean, right after 25% state of charge. That's that's just math. That's a mad charging curve. Um, and you can see immediately it starts just tapering off all the way down to 70 kilowatts for a while, kind of holding that a little past 80. And then, of course, it slowly tapers off as it hits 100. That's for all EVs. Uh, but you can see here, right, fairly quickly hits that 250 cap that we would see previously on the version 3 or version 4 posts because... Tesla limited the amperage to just 700 amps, which gives you a 250 kilowatt peak because Tesla's current lineup, the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and the Cybertruck with its split pack have a max of about 400 volts for the battery pack. And so that gives you 700 amps. That gives you a max of 250 kilowatts. Uh, but now Tesla has done a ton of software updates, improving the charging performance, um, right, we're seeing these new version four posts, which allow for 325 kilowatt peak charging. So it'll be interesting to see what the curve looks like. Um, Gregor truck here on Twitter actually posted uh, a video kind of showing the curve here on screen. And so you can see on screen here, right, we peak very quickly up to 300 and like 18, so 318 kilowatts, and it immediately slowly starts taping off. So 318 kilowatts at about 16, 17%. And then by the time we hit 21%, 20%, we're down to 273 kilowatts. And then, yeah, once you're past 26%, now you're riding at 250 kilowatts like any other, uh, the version three dispenser superchargers. And then you can see it, it quickly starts uh, slowing down here at 40%, 175 kilowatts. And then down at 50%, we're here at 144 kilowatts, about 150. Um, so look, clearly, I think compared to this curve that we see on screen here with the uh, Cybertruck, this was done, right, uh, January 11th, 2024. So a year ago. It's been a year. I would love to see out of spec uh, our out of spec team redo this here. I'll text Kyle actually and be like, hey, we need to do an update to the Tesla uh, Cybertruck's charge curve. But clearly it would be improved because again, Tesla's done software updates. We're seeing an improved amperage limit on the version four posts, which allow 
higher peak charging. But again, it's really the curve that matters. If the Cybertruck can hold 250 for you know a, a long state of charge, then that's better than peaking at 325 and quickly falling down to 150 by 50%. You know what I mean? You wanna hold a, uh, as much as you can for a long period of time rather than peaking very fast and then immediately tapering off uh, down to a lower state of charge. And honestly, objectively, Teslas have some of the worst charging curves. Um, Tesla and Rivian seem to be like right here when it comes to charging curve. Everyone else, better. Of course, we have the BZ4X, right? Other EVs that are just really down here. Uh, but in terms of electric vehicle first companies, uh, Tesla actually has some uh, average charging curves compared to a lot of the other vehicles that we have on the market. And I'll even show you here, um, right? So we see here Hummer, Lucid Grand Touring, Porsche Taycan, Porsche Macan, Porsche. And here we have the Cybertruck, which peaks, but you can see how long the Hummer and the Porsche hold out, right? We see the Porsche, the 2025 Porsche Taycan, which won the i90 Surge, right? Um, and the i90 Surge we took for those who don't know, we took 10 EVs from Seattle to Boston and drove them nonstop, just charging to see how they would perform in a cross country test. And the Porsche Taycan was at, uh, it was charging, DC fast charging for about 13 minutes on average. So it was stopping for 13 minutes charging and then just going to the next. That's because this curve here, it is holding, right? More than 300 kilowatts up to 60% state of charge. And immediately after 60, it's like, boop, and then it drives down to uh, right down here. It holds 200 and about 15 kilowatts, which is still good uh, at 74%. So we can see these other vehicles here, right, holding it for quite some long. And then we have the Cybertruck over here, which holds 250 kilowatts for 25% and then immediately starts dropping. And same thing for like, again, a lot of these other EVs here. Um, and so you can see it's just kind of, average but it just has a higher peak so yep hopefully that makes more sense as well look thank you guys so much for watching i cannot wait to see what the rollout of the version 4 dispenser is like because again we're getting more chargers that 400 kilowatts is really just going to be the standard for charging 1000 volts high voltage evs will now be able to charge getting fast rates and you also want to make sure that your infrastructure is future proof. And I mean, at some point in the future, right, these current 400 kilowatts won't be enough, right? Maybe it'll go to 500, 600, who knows what the future has in store. But the point is you want to future proof your stations enough that they fit the current generation of EVs charging. Because again, we have the Lucid Gravity. We have the Porsche Taycan. We have so many new EVs, higher voltage EVs that are coming to the market. And soon, right, these expensive, the technology of these expensive EVs is slowly going to trickle down to cheaper EVs. And there you go, right? We're gonna have a bunch of EVs with 800 volt architecture. And you wanna make sure that the chargers have a, allow a higher voltage so they charge better. Again, <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was a good explanation. I hope some people learned some things. Um, before this, I did a lot of research and trying to get more clarity for myself so I can explain this best for you guys. I love this a lot. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. My name is Isaiah. This is the Out of Spec Podcast, and I'll see you guys in the next one.